Hi, welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and today we are talking about the Moto Gadget Motoscope Pro, which is a digital dash for your motorcycle. All right, so we're talking about the Motoscope Pro from Moto Gadget. And in case you don't know by now, the Motoscope Pro is a dashboard and gauge that you can use on your motorcycle. It has a ton of information and it really is one of the most comprehensive gauges that I've ever seen and one of the best manufactured gauges that I've ever seen on the market. So with that, let's get into it. This is the plain, boring white box that's so typical of the Moto Gadget products, but don't worry, the stuff inside is well worth it. They didn't waste the time on the packaging, they put it in the product. So first things, let's grab this gauge get it out of the bubble wrap that keeps it safe during shipping and inside we find a very well manufactured gauge it's got an aluminum outer housing and then a crystal clear front glass uh, there's a cable with a bunch of wires and that's what you use to connect to the bike we'll get into the details of that in just a second don't worry so that's the gauge they even go through the details of adding a, a mark on the back so you know what size thread the mounting screws are you don't have to guess you don't have to try one screw another screw no you know what it is from the beginning and you can get the right stuff the first time so, great product, like all the Moto Gadget products. So what else is in the box? Uh, we get a mounting kit and a speed sensor. And uh, we'll start with that speed sensor. This is, this is basically just a simple magnetic reed switch. And that means that there's a pair of contacts inside of this little housing. And then when a magnet passes near it, it will, with magnetic force, cause those two contacts to close, creating a closed circuit, basically a closed switch through these two wires that come off of it. And you use this to tell the gauge itself how fast um, the bike is going. And that works by using a magnet on either the front or the rear wheel, or maybe the counter shaft sprocket or the rear sprocket, the rear rotor, some place that's going to pass by this reed switch every time. And there are also a couple of magnets that are in the kit that you can mount in the head of a screw, in the head of a bolt, somewhere in there so that you have that magnet mounted and it passes by this switch. Now, mounting this switch is pretty much up to you because all the bikes are so different. It's really gonna be something that you, you're gonna have to get into some custom fabrication. It's not that difficult. Most of the time you can find a small strip of, of metal, either aluminum or steel or stainless steel, and you can find a couple of bolts that you drill some holes, put it in there, bend it, and add another hole that the, that the uh, reed switch goes through. And then there's some threaded um, nuts on here that you can use to adjust the distance so you get the correct placement of the magnet past the reed switch. That sounds a bit complicated. It's not too bad. It does take a little bit of effort, but there's not too many other ways around it. One of the ways around it is if you've got a modern bike that has fuel injection or a more elaborate ECU, you may have a, a vehicle speed sensor already installed on the bike that was actuating the original gauge, an electronic speedometer, or feeding back into the engine control unit, something like that. Many of those gauges are compatible with the Motoscope Pro and all the Motos Moto Gadget gauges. However, you're going to want to check. There's a cross-reference on Moto Gadget's site that lists which are compatible and which aren't. And if it, if unfortunately you have one that isn't, you need to install the reed switch. If you're lucky and you have one that is compatible, great. You can just hook it directly to the gauge and it saves you a bit of trouble. Um, a few other things that are in the mounting kit. We mentioned the magnets for the reed switch. Those are these tiny little guys right here. And of course, these are magical neodymium magnets, which are some of the most powerful on the planet. And we get a few mounting washers to go with the mounting screws. And you could use those just to kind of bolt through a piece of metal that holds the gauge to your triple clamp or to the frame or to a fairing, whatever works for you. And then there's a bunch of these kind of crimp terminals. Of course, these work just fine. Um, personally, I don't really like crimp terminals. I'd rather see a soldered and heat shrunk joint or a a waterproof connector or some other automotive style connector. I just find that those are a little bit more reliable, more robust. And then there's also this very small little push button switch. And depending on the control setup that you have on your handlebars, you may want to add this and it allows you to cycle through the various functions on the gauge, reset the odometer, things like that. So you're going to need to have at least one configuration button. They include one if you don't have um, that, con that capacity in your current handlebar controls. So for the most part, you have almost everything you're going to need to install this gauge right out of the box. Put these back in the package. 
All right. And then there's one other thing that we should talk about in this box, and that is a fuse. So there is a fuse, and you're going to want to use that to protect the small gauge wires on this gauge. Um, I know it's a lot of gauges in one sentence, but they mean completely different things. Let's say protect the small gauge wires on this instrument. So don't forget this. Use it. And instructions. These are fairly dry, fairly technical, but the information's in there. You may need to read it a couple times. After reading it a couple times, if you still run into trouble, email us, give us a phone call. We're here to help you through it. We've done this before, and we can get your project up and running. All right, so that's kind of the overview of what goes in the box and how that all works. If we want, we can get into a little more detail of, well, what do all of these wires, what, what do all these wires actually do? So first things first, you got a black wire, that's ground got a red wire, that's constant voltage, that's constant plus 12 power, and that means that you don't lose the memory in the instrument. It keeps a, a time of day clock, it keeps a total lifetime hours. You can even set this gauge up to determine your service limits. If you want to have it uh, where you change your oil every 100 hours or 3,000 miles, you can actually configure this gauge to do that kind of stuff. Uh, next we've got a brown wire. The brown wire is what we call a switched positive. So that's the one that turns on with your ignition switch and that's the one that lets the gauge know, all right, it's time to wake up and go to work. Uh, moving on, we've got a white wire. The white wire is the vehicle speed input sensor. That would either connect to the reed switch or your factory VSS, vehicle speed sensor. Um, next, we've got a green wire. The green wire is for configuring the gauge um, and that's to cycle through the various functions, reset odometers, can set up the various menus, those kinds of things. Um, yellow. Yellow wire is for the TAC input. That means you're going to connect that to the low voltage side of your coil, or if you have an ECU and it has a TAC output, you can connect it to that. The one thing you need to know, the yellow wire should never be connected to the high tension side of an ignition system. That's the spark plug wires, the spark plug, any of that kind of stuff. And also if you have a CDI type ignition on a dirt bike, on some of the KTMs, or maybe an SR400, 500, um, you need to use a, a secondary isolation system, isolation sensor for the TAC input because those CDI ignitions will use a higher voltage that's not compatible with this gauge. You can't connect directly to it. So be careful if you've got an SR um, or you've got a, a predominantly dirt bike that you're converting to the street. And then we get into the orange wire, and that's a communication wire. That's basically um, it's kind of like a CAN bus communication that will talk with a breakout box, and we're going to get to that in just one second. And this is a way that you can feed additional information to the gauge for functions that don't have dedicated wires. The last two wires, blue and purple, that's for CAN bus enabled motorcycles where the motorcycle is actually fully CAN bus enabled. That's like a BMW R9T or maybe one of the modern Triumphs that has a, an M Tri associated with it. For most applications, you're not going to use either of those. You can clip them short, make sure they don't contact anything, and leave it at that. All right, so we mentioned that orange wire. This is a, a communication wire, and that is designed to communicate with a breakout box. So you may have noticed we didn't talk about any of the dash lights. We didn't talk about a high beam indicator, a turn signal indicator, a neutral light, an oil pressure switch, um, a check engine light, any of that stuff, or even a low fuel light. Those things are, are handled by an additional electronic device called a breakout box. The one that I'm holding and the one that I'm showing you right now is the breakout box B, and this is the more complete um, and more thorough of the two breakout boxes. The breakout box A is a little bit more simplified and doesn't have quite as many inputs. So with this one, we get oil pressure, water temperature, oil temperature, air temperature, a low fuel light, an oil pressure switch, a turn signal right, turn signal left, a high beam, a neutral light, a error input, and then that bus communication uh, for the orange wire to the gauge itself, and then a ground and power. So that's the rundown of the inputs on the breakout box. It's kind of amazing. You basically just hook the stuff up to this, and it figures out what's going on and then tells the gauge exactly what to do. The other thing that's included in with the breakout box are a bunch of these small ferrules. And these ferrules are actually very important because in order to connect the wires to the breakout box, you need to strip the wire and then insert it into the screw terminal. Now, if you just put the bare wire into the screw terminal, it won't take that long for the wires to fatigue and then break and you'll be wondering why it isn't working. 
That's why you want to use one of these ferrules. This slips over that strip section of wire and then you crimp it in order to strain relieve and protect the individual strands of wire so they don't fray and break. We did a really nice tutorial on how to do this and that's in the deluxe cable kit video and I suggest you check that out if you're not already familiar with how to do this. And there you have it. That's the Motoscope Pro from MotoGadget. And obviously this is a fairly modern looking gauge and maybe it isn't quite appropriate to the vintage build that you're working on, but don't worry. We've got a lot of other gauge options at RevivalCycles.com. There you'll find the Chrono Classic, the Motoscope Mini, uh, the Motoscope Tiny, and a bunch of different mounting brackets and attachments that might make it a little easier on your install. Check that stuff out. It could save you some time on fabrication. With all these products, these are the same products that we use. They're the same products that we sell. We're familiar with them. We know how they work. If you run into trouble on your installation, give us an email. Give us a phone call. We're here to help you get your project sorted out. And if you enjoy these videos, please, you can support us by buying from us. And you can do that at RevivalCycles.com. Thanks so much for watching.